So you're level 50 in world tier three and you don't know what to do now. How do you level quick, easy, while gearing for the end game? Well, RNG has you for all of the classes. Greetings, Internet DDA here, and like many of us, I've been spending my time leveling. I'm sure many of you have been spending your time leveling. If you're not a full-time content creator or a full-time gamer, you're likely not level 100 yet. So spending all my time leveling, I wanted to share with you all of my tips and tricks to get from level 50 all the way to level 100. Now, if you're not level 50 yet, we did release a video on the levels 1 through 50. Please check out that video. Click in the upper corner. Now, after you do get to World Tier 3, the first capstone is, is pretty easy for a dungeon. After you do get to World Tier 3, it's pretty short-lived. You're only in World Tier 3 for a maximum of 20 levels. And considering it's the first World Tier that gets the experience boost, you level fairly quickly. And, um, you know, you have access to all these nice open world tools for you to level. You want to think about jumping to world tier four starting at level 55. I think level 55 is a pretty reasonable level that a lot of uh, people can start thinking about doing the world tier four capstone with uh, defeating the echo of Elias. That is if you have like a good build, decent aspects, and that may be too early for some of you and that's okay. I think a comfortable level to do the, the capstone dungeon at world tier three would be around level 60 but level 55 is totally reasonable and as you can see i do that here with my barbarian who is not a hodo build by the way now to get to the point of you being able to do the capstone dungeon in world tier 3 i'm going to recommend for you to do several things you're going to definitely want to do the seasonal area the brazers and the seasonal area whispers this is going to get you a lot of pearls awarding and a lot of elemental cores for you to be able to uh, you know, take into World Tier 4 and have a lot of those materials for you to be able to use in the vaults and then in, the, likewise, the brazers in World Tier 4. The seasonal area is signified by the icon that talks about the arcane tremors. Likewise, uh, you will see that one area has whispers located in it that are designated for the, the season of the construct. There should be a lot of players there. there they have been ridden with players uh, every time I've gone there, so it's pretty easy. And the experience seems to be zone-wide almost. So at, le at least it's a very large area that you can get experience. So this area with its combination of high density and high player count with everyone running, you know, the brazers and everyone uh, getting the whispers, it's pretty easy to do the whispers in the area, you know, kill the constructs, which is really just done by activating the brazer once, kill a herald of Malphus and then loot the obelisks. Uh, you're going to want to do all this anyway at a, at a high frequency. Likewise, I recommend for you to figure out which dungeon is the Whisper Dungeon of the area. It's going to be one of the four vaults, you know, copper, ink, cinders. But you're going to want to locate which dungeon is has the Whisper, has the five Whispers, and then get yourself a sigil that is of that dungeon that's an appropriate level of what you can do you're going to want to get as close to 10 levels above you and of course to figure out the level of the monster in the dungeon you just take the tier of the sigil and then add 53. so if you're around level 50 you're going to want about to run a tier 7 so that way you can fight level 60s and maximize your experience gain because of course as we all know experience caps out on killing monsters at 10 levels above you that's 10 levels of difference or higher than you that the monsters are so you're always going to want to think about this when you level right so and as we talk about leveling into the end game this 10 levels of experience is pretty much the most important thing and the decisions that we make are going to be to maximize us killing monsters that are at least 10 levels above us so like i said get the whispers because you'll get a huge chunk of experience almost half a level every time you complete those you get eight whispers whenever you do a seasonal area so that's decent so you'll probably want to supplement with some whispers around the area just normal whispers the best rotation that i have found to do normal whispers is to do the find a corpse or the kill whisper which is a minor whisper giving you one you do those while getting either the rituals or the moats that activate the altar and those are like middle whispers they give you three and then of course it's always good to run through a few dungeons to get that five whisper as long as the monsters are a fair amount of levels above you 
you know, a couple levels above you. You could grind out Nightmare Dungeons on World Tier 3 or Vaults on World Tier 3 if you wanted to level that way. You could do that. You would get Glyph XP. However, I wouldn't really recommend that because I do think that running the Whispers is a little faster. You'll kill things faster. And the boost of experience that you get from the Whisper, whisper completion is just a ton. And then likewise, if the reason you're doing the Dungeons on World Tier 3 is to get Glyph experience, the glyph experience that you get in the later tiers of the dungeons is so so much more it is more time efficient for you to wait and if you think about it you're level 50 you're fresh you know you're level 55 you don't have that many paragon points you don't have the ability to utilize those glyphs that's why i wait a little on the nightmare dungeon grind so once you're ready to tackle the capstone dungeon you're about level 55 maybe 58 uh give it a shot make sure you have aspects make sure you cap out your fire resistance for the echo of elias so he doesn't one shot you make sure you have enough damage for the damage race of elias because he will overwhelm you if you don't have enough damage because he does summon adds and especially when he gets down to his like basically third phase he rapidly summons adds, so if you don't, like I said, it's a, it's pretty much a DPS race at that time, so make sure your DPS is good too. And and don't be ashamed. Uh, as you can see in this clip, I died several times, both fighting Elias, uh, and I realized I needed a little bit more armor to because I was level 55. Fighting level 70s, 15 levels above you, it's a lot. So you need a substantial armor level, so I realized I needed to add a little bit more, spend a little bit money, more money into my gear set in order to actually push up into world tier four don't be ashamed about that like don't be ashamed about going back and getting a few more levels leveling to 60 pushing that high this early is very difficult and only certain builds can do it and only certain cl and certain classes are better at it than others feel out where your character is in terms of power and adjust on the fly now going to world tier four at this early of a level is very scary the monsters are level 75 they will one shot you they will overwhelm you so we're going to be very tactical about how we level in this area and it trust me even though it's going to be a little slower the experience bonus that you get for being in world tier 4 is so substantial that it will make up for a few deaths it will make up for a low clear speed trust me now the first thing you're going to want to do if you're level 55 or 58 is you're going to want to run to the seasonal whisper area in world tier 4 and then find people. You can kill the mobs, and I, and I guarantee you that if you were able to complete the capstone dungeon, you can kill the mobs in this area. However, they can kill you because you have sacred gear on, and you have minus resistances, and they will kill you. So the best thing is to find a group that are running brazers. Trust me, you'll be able to find in World Tier 4 in, that, in the Whisper area for the season. Just find it. There's going to be a bunch of people there running brazers. Everyone needs the materials to run the Echo of Malphus. Everyone needs the materials to run the, the Vault Dungeons. So there's going to be a lot of people there. And if you're willing to give up your materials to summon the Heralds of Malphus, people will come and they will help you kill everything. And you're going to get a ton of experience. Now you're going to want to do this to at least level 60, maybe level 62, 63, 64, I would say. And it's going to go super quick. Like one hour will get you three, four, five levels pretty easy. And this is also going to get you your first bit of ancestral gear. You'll get all the drops. So you'll be able to actually gear up your character and start making your character actually decently strong to fight the mobs in World Tier 4. So once you hit level 62, 63, 64... That's when you're going to want to think about doing Hell Tides. Now, the Hell Tide monsters are three levels above. They are level 78. So you are going to be fighting well above your level. It is a dangerous area. However, with risk comes great reward because this is going to be the time that you really need those Hell Tide materials. And this is also going to be the time where running Hell Tides is going to give you the maximum experience. Remember, we talked about that 10 level difference. Usually hell tides are three levels above you always. But when you first go to world tier four, they are always level 78. So level 68 is the sweet spot for this. Now I said 62, 63, 64, because I think that's when you can start really running the area and not dying. If you wanted to be a little bit more safe, you could run normal whispers in the area, I would say. Just like I mentioned before, you know, you do your 
your find a corpse and your um, kill kill certain like spiders or kill skeletons, whatever it is, and then you get the moats or you get the rituals while you're doing them, and then you can level up that way in World Tier Four pretty easily. Like the the open world is a little bit less scary than the Helltide area. So if you're really worried about dying in the Helltide area, just level via whispers until you get to about 67, 66, 67, 68. And then once you hit 68, that's the sweet spot because the mobs are level 78 in Helltide. Now we're gonna need these materials, Forgotten Souls. We're gonna need the Fiend Roses. All of these items are gonna help us fully upgrade our ancestral gear and then actually additionally roll that gear to make it better. We are gonna really need these materials as we start gearing up to do upper level dungeons. And also the hell tides are really good for getting legendary items and legendary aspects. So they're gonna get you ancestral level gear very easily and ancestral level aspects very easily. And the great thing about it is to, in today's day and age, you do not need helltides.com. You just simply zoom in on the map and you can see the chest. They glow bright orange and you do not need a third party website anymore. Blizzard has fixed that. Thank you, Blizzard. Now you're actually gonna get close to 1 million experience for trading in a living steel chest. You are gonna get a boatload of Forgotten Souls and a boatload of Fiend Roses and also elixirs, nice and powerful elixirs. All of these are gonna be great for your leveling. Now keep in mind, they changed Helltide in season three. Now there is no hour reset. It is literally on the top and a top of the hour timer. It, it runs for 55 minutes, then it has a five minute downtime. And you can use that five minute downtime to clear your inventory and prepare for the next Helltide. Now I would recommend you running Helltide till about maybe the low 70s, 71, 72, 73. Cause at that point, the monsters are gonna start catching up to you in level and your experience is gonna start slowing down. But again, you're gonna need those materials, so spending more time in that area is not a bad thing. Leveling up in Helltide is really gonna set you up to carry out your gear into the end game. Now, once you hit the low 70s, this is when, for the rest of your leveling, is, is pretty simple, actually. And you're gonna do what I am calling the Vault Loop. And the Vault Loop is simple. It goes, open your map, and look for the seasonal whisper area. The seasonal whispers are on a 90 minute timer. So once you do them, you could wait an hour and a half, either set a timer on your phone or just check periodically. Um, and then in 90 minutes, they will reappear and go to a new area. You're gonna go to the whisper area, do all the whispers. Just like before, you're gonna figure out which dungeon, which one of the four vaults has a whisper. You are gonna open up a sigil of appropriate level, remember, 10 levels above you, you want to be fighting. So if you're level 75, you want to do a tier 32, for example. Remember, plus 53, so 32 plus 53 is 85, and that's 10 levels above what you are. Now, of course, you do want to push higher. The upper tiers in the vaults and the Nightmare Dungeons do give more glyph experience and way better gear. Way, way better gear. At around tier 90, you actually start getting guaranteed 925s and around tier 80 is when i started to see a ton of 925s so if you find the plus 10 levels is getting a little too easy for you you're getting a lot of good gear and developing an end game build push higher and get better gear so this puts you on like a 90 minute loop where you'll just do the whispers do the whisper vault and then just run vaults until the whispers are up again do the whispers do the whisper vault run vaults until they're up again and you could just continuously do this loop the vault loop until you're level 100 and it's great leveling like i said the the vaults have extreme mob density you can do them super quick get all the get all the whispers so you're getting varshan mats while you're doing it simultaneously you're getting lots of gold it's extremely fast for your leveling extremely time efficient and i highly recommend uh doing this so this is how I pretty much almost have two characters to level 100 already with not that much time invested. Uh, I think this is one of the best leveling methods. The brazers and the whispers are really, really, really good for your leveling. The mob density is crazy in the seasonal area. Jump up to the world tiers as fast as you can. Get that bonus experience and I'll see you in the gauntlet. Please hit a like if you like this video. Please hit subscribe for all the best game guides and Diablo 4 builds. 
And as always, turn your dial to Random Number Gaming for weekly updates on Diablo 4.